Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, something called absolute uncertainty. Now, all we mean by uncertainty is an unreliability in your results. This might be due to human error, this might be due to the precision or lack thereof of your measuring instruments. But either way, for your EMPA, there are two different types of uncertainty that you need to be able to calculate. The first of these is the absolute uncertainty. Now, if we look at uh, measuring the length of a line, you can see that depending on where you start it or where you'll finish, there's a little bit of inaccuracy. Okay, you're limited to how precise you can be. Now, in the case of this ruler here, we are limited to the precision of our measuring instrument. So, for this, the reading could be anywhere between 5.6 and 5.7 centimeters. So, the absolute uncertainty, if you're taking a single reading, is down to the precision of my measuring instrument. This ruler here measures to the nearest one millimeter, and for our exam board, AQA, you state that the precision of an instrument is plus or minus the smallest measurable interval. So for this one here, I would record it as 5.6 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters, or one millimeter as that is. So let's take a look at an instrument uh, that measures something digitally. Here we have an instrument that measures both the voltage and the current. The voltage at the top is 5.9 plus or minus 0 0.1 volts. That's because if you look here, we have one decimal place. If that is a volt, that is 0 0.1 of a volt. And I can't get any more precise than that 0 0.1 of a volt reading there. For my current, I have the same thing. 0.12, this case here I have two decimal places, so this one here I can get a precision of 0.01 amps, but again I can't get any more precise than that. Of course a special case for this is stopwatches. Now looking at this picture here, you might say that the precision of my instrument here and therefore the absolute uncertainty in this measurement of 11.32 seconds would be 0 0.01 seconds. But there is a problem. Human error is actually nowhere near as precise as the precision on this instrument. And so when we're dealing with taking time intervals, with using a stopwatch, we always say that the human error is about 0.2 seconds. So in this case, the absolute uncertainty of my reading would be 11.32 seconds plus or minus 0.2 seconds. How could we reduce this uncertainty? Now, this is always a really common question to come up in the Emperor exam. And if we think, for example, about a pendulum. Now, if I were to use a stopwatch to measure one period, and typically, to make this as accurate as possible, I would use a fiducial marker, which would be in the center here of the oscillation, where it's moving at its fastest. Then, measuring one oscillation, I get a time of 0.94 plus or minus 0.2 seconds. Now, instantly you can see 0.2 as a fraction of 0.94 is actually massive. So the uncertainty in this measurement is absolutely huge. How can I reduce that? Well, if I measure multiple oscillations, so let's say I were to measure 20 full oscillations from top to top there and back again, then that means I have a much longer time interval. In fact, for 20 oscillations on this, I get 19.88 seconds. Now, I've still got the same absolute uncertainty, 0.2 seconds, in that time measurement there, which was for 20 oscillations. Now, to find the time for one oscillation, I divide that time by 20. But as it happens, I also divide my absolute uncertainty by 20. This drops it down from plus or minus 0.2 to plus or minus 0.01 seconds, a much smaller absolute uncertainty and therefore a much more reliable result. So remember, if this comes up in the exam, how can we improve 
the accuracy, improve the uncertainty on a time measurement. We can measure multiple oscillations and then divide by the number of oscillations to get the time for one oscillation, but that also means we divide the absolute uncertainty by the number of oscillations. Of course, usually, if you're being a good scientist, you'll actually be taking several sets of repeated da data. You're going to get a range. So if we look at this table here for the uh, extension in a spring, you can see I have three numbers. And of course, you would work out a mean extension. But there's also another column here that we need to think about, and this is the range, the final column. The mean would be 0.853 recurring. But of course, that's far too accurate. In all of my other columns, I have two decimal places. I cannot get any more accuracy than two decimal places, even in my mean. So I need to round that up to the nearest of my two decimal places. So my mean extension there would be 0.85. Remember, of course, also for AQA, whenever you're labeling your tables, you label it as forward slash meter, not any other form. Now my range is just my largest extension, 0.87, take away my smallest extension, 0.84. That basically gives me the spread of my results. Now to convert your range or your spread into an absolute uncertainty, you just halve it. So the absolute uncertainty from a range of readings is half the range. But of course for this one here, that 0 0.03, well if I halve that and get 0 0.015, that puts me into an extra set of decimal places. I need to make sure I keep to the original number of decimal places, so I need to make sure that I round that up to plus or minus 0 0.02 meters for my absolute uncertainty. And the way that I've written it here is the way that we typically show your absolute uncertainty. You have your mean value, your plus or minus, and then you have your absolute uncertainty, in this case half the range, and then you put your unit at the end. So that's a summary of absolute uncertainty. If you uh, got to this video from the website, Space Engineers, this particularly is aimed at you, then go back and have a go at the practice questions, and then at the end of the four exercises, you can have a go at the summary questions.